Is it their eyes? Their fur? Or simply, their moves? No matter what it is, face it, they're irresistible. It's time to catch up with some of the freshest faces that we share our world with. From sunrise to sunset, be immersed in their lives. Mingle with these youngsters and get to know them and their families better. Experience all the hustle and bustle of their daily routines, all while getting up close to these baby animals in our world. day is taking place in zoos around the world, catching youngsters from all walks of life in action. Coming up, via hidden camera, take a peek at some newborn red pandas in their den. Then, watch them take their first tree climb. Plus, has this playful baby bitten off more than it can chew, challenging its mum to a bear wrestle? Stick around to find out. And these cheeky monkeys are splashing out, throwing a pool party. Everyone in. <laughs> Zoos. They've been around since ancient times. The earliest being set up as a show of wealth and power. From queens of ancient Egypt to Chinese emperors and Aztec rulers, the attraction and fascination surrounding animals has always been a global trend. The general public were able to start enjoying this exotic thrill in the 18th century when modern zoos opened their gates. Zoological parks are always evolving and improving, with habitats closely replicating natural environments. Open range zoos providing even larger territories to roam and explore. New arrivals are always cause for excitement and celebration. Zoo births providing even more opportunities to better understand the animals that share our world. Time to walk through the gates and visit some zoo babies. The sun is rising, which means it's wake-up time in zoos around the world. Looks like it's a snow day for this liger cub. Ligers may be half lion and half tiger, but they're 100% chilly this morning. They're not the only ones. This tacking kid can see its own breath. The rock hyraxes know how to heat things up. It's time for a pre-breakfast game of pile-up. How long can this balancing act last? Now for a second attempt. Whoops! This zoo mom is in for a long day. In one of the warmer zoos of the world, a pair of bear cubs are getting chewy with each other. A bit of rough play is the norm for these furry siblings. This red kangaroo joey is more gentle, giving its mother a quick kiss. This behavior helps to create a stronger bond between the two. Some tag team preening is on the cards for the agoutis this morning. 
zoo animals around the world are now well awake. There's just one sleepyhead left that needs a bit of prodding to get started. That did it. With that, it's official. The zoo babies are ready to go. To kickstart their big day, a healthy breakfast is in order. And these hungry zoo residents have already placed theirs. Milk all around for the junior members of the Toke Monkey Troop. Although they appear fresh from a trip to the local barber, this species is known for their unique haircuts. Even the babies are sporting their own slick styles. Unlike any other type of macaque, Females are easy to pick out from the crowd thanks to their pinky red faces. Brown bear cubs need a lot of energy to grow into their large, strong bodies. Some cubs are thoroughly spoiled, nursing for over two years. This mum appears to be very patient with her hungry offspring. A red kangaroo joey is getting a double offer. A warm meal, plus a complimentary grooming session. Zebra foals can nurse until they're 18 months old. So the taller they get, the more difficult it can be to reach that milk. Here's a rare sight, a kiwi. These flightless birds from New Zealand are omnivores. They use their long beaks to probe the ground for a variety of small treats. An agouti is foraging for another type of meal. This ground dweller has sharp incisors that are the perfect utensils for their preferred food, nuts. The plowshare tortoises are sharing a communal breakfast. It's fresh greens this morning. As an endangered species, being able to observe them in action is especially helpful for zoo researchers. There's no escape for this cactus leaf. These two will be going back and forth to the final bite. At the golden tack-in enclosure, a fresh load of hay has been served up. Mom and the little one have started first. And now, the big guy wants his share of the spoils. Those with a big enough mouthful can continue their breakfast elsewhere. Being ruminants, cud chewing helps them digest their food. Looks like the tacking kid wants a side of milk with its hay, but the diner is closed. It's beginning to warm up, and with four bellies, the zoo babies are heading out with their parents in search of activity. Brown bear cubs stay with their mothers for two to three years. One of the first life skills she teaches them is to follow their noses. Their superior sense of smell acts like a homing device, leading them to all the right places. Interesting finds need to be kept discreet, especially when there are pushy siblings nearby. It's just a rock, but no matter. It's always fun looking for buried treasure. There's a cool class going on in the kangaroo paddock. Beating the heat is always a priority for these marsupials. All the joeys need to do is follow these simple steps. Step one, find a comfy spot in the shade. Step two, turn on the natural air conditioning by licking their forearms, as kindly demonstrated by the older roos. Add a fresh breeze, 
And ta-da! Some very cool customers. One skill the Joeys have already picked up, the art of taking a good stretch. Like most Australian babies, they also know on hot days it's best to conserve energy. Some minor adjustments, and this is the perfect place for a kangaroo rest stop. Over with the Tackins, there's some father-son bonding going on. As adults, males use their muscular bodies and thick horns to challenge each other for dominance. This little one is starting early, and Dad is happy to entertain its valiant efforts. Looking tough can be hard when one's horns are yet to emerge. Despite the battle, this little warrior is showing it does have a softer side. Inside a warm burrow, zoo cameras show a rare glimpse of a wombat joey contemplating its first outdoor expedition. It's just one week out of the pouch. Mum has cleared the way using her strong claws. Wombats do have a reputation for being stubborn, and this little one is true to form, determined to stay indoors for a little while longer. Why go outside when you can annoy Mum? It's time to open the family album to take a closer look at some colourful characters native to the forests of South America. Blue and gold macaws. Females usually lay three eggs which are incubated for about 28 days. Born blind and featherless, as chicks, it can be hard to see the resemblance to their adult counterparts. But these pink chicks will eventually grow into one of the most vibrant-looking parrots on Earth. But to get there, they need to eat. And a lot more than you might expect. For the first seven days of life, they need to be fed every hour. At 10 days of age, these hungry little munchkins will start to grow feathers. They will remain in their nest boxes for three months, rapidly growing until eventually they will fledge and feed themselves. Macaws are highly social by nature and will rarely be seen alone in the wild. These birds love to make squawks and their calls can be heard from over eight kilometers away. Macaws enjoy a mixed diet of seeds, nuts and various fruits. On such a healthy diet, these impressive birds can enjoy a long, fruitful life, over 50 years. There are even reports of one blue and gold macaw living for more than a century. Macaws do know how to age gracefully. No matter how old they get, their feathers don't turn grey. These majestic parrots retaining their beautiful colours for life. Next, a wild cat that's bigger than your average tabby, but a lot smaller than a leopard. Somewhere in between is South America's ocelot. This feline is most at home in thick vegetation, where it can take advantage of its superior tree climbing skills. Mothers can produce up to four kittens in a litter. Weighing just 250 grams at birth, these infants grow quite slowly. Baby ocelots don't open their eyes for about 18 days. As a nocturnal species, ocelot kittens are tended to during the day, but left alone at night so their mothers can hunt. Kittens are nursed for six weeks, then they move on to solid food. These tree-loving felines will reach full size by about 10 months of age, staying with their mother until their second birthday. Once independent, a young ocelot will find territory of their own. Although they may look timid, these felines can become very aggressive if another ocelot breaches their borders. Living at a zoo means this ocelot doesn't have that kind of concern leaving it more time to search for tasty treats and keep itself looking impeccable. This cat wash is completely self-operated. Let's go and spend part of the morning with the largest of the great apes, gorillas. 
there is a lot of excitement in their enclosure due to the arrival of this little one four days ago. Mum looks besotted. At birth, gorillas weigh just under two kilograms. It's a convenient size, giving Mum a spare arm to browse for feed. Elsewhere, an older baby is beginning to experiment with its independence. But you're never too old for a snuggly cuddle with Mum. The exercise ropes provide a good opportunity to burn some energy. And by the looks of things, they don't taste too bad either. Enclosures with obstacles and climbing objects help young gorillas build strong muscles and develop their coordination, which will become more important as they get older. And now for the dismount. Smooth. This zoo baby will be back on the jungle gym soon, but for now, it's time for a break. Many zoo residents take pride in their appearance, with grooming sessions being an important part of their daily routine. Just like house cats, tigers will use their rough tongues to tidy up their young. The process improves the bond between mother and offspring and helps with the removal of excess dirt and hair. When lemurs groom, they use interesting tools, special teeth known as dental combs. Very handy. Some animals take the do-it-yourself approach to bath time, while others appreciate a little help from loved ones. Here's a family that's happy to scratch each other's backs. Macaques, like many primates, commit a large part of their day to grooming each other. Unlike cats that use their tongues, macaques have nimble fingers to get into those hard-to-reach places. They're looking for anything that doesn't belong, such as old skin, insects, or parasites. For primates, the process helps them build relationships and maintain strong family structures. This troop is meticulous. When it comes to preening, no hair is left unturned. Let's now visit some creatures native to the island of Madagascar, ring-tailed lemurs to discover more about their whole life story. With their pointed faces and long, fluffy tails, it's hard to miss a troop of these primates. Clearly named for their stripy tails, these distinctive lemurs have a gestation period of four and a half months. Having one baby is standard, but when food is plentiful, it's not uncommon for females to have two. During the first couple of weeks, newborns cling to their mother's belly before eventually moving towards her back, much like little jockeys. This pair have to share the ride. Lemurs are born into very caring communities, with other females lending a hand looking after any young. Baby lemurs develop rather quickly trying out solids while still riding around on mum's back. By five to six months, they're fully weaned. As opposed to many other primate societies, it's the dominant female in the troop that leads the way. She chooses the best place to browse and gets first pick on any available food. One behavior young ring-tailed lemurs can't help but learn is the art of sunbathing. They will often soak up some rays as a group, spreading their arms out and adjusting their bodies to attain maximum exposure. As for their tails, 
They're not just about good looks. While they aren't grippy, they do play other important roles, such as helping with balance, identification, and even communication. During breeding season, males are known to wipe their scent glands on them, then wave them around in stink fights. The smelliest tail wins. These quirky, sun-loving primates can enjoy a long life of 18 years or more. With the morning racing by, it's a good time to look in on the newborn gorilla. Gorilla infants are very similar to human babies, although they develop at a faster rate. By eight weeks, they're able to smile and play, and crawling starts soon after. As they get older, they love to explore their environment. The older baby has discovered something very curious, but what to do with it? When in doubt, in the mouth. Gorilla babies will start eating vegetation at about the 10-week mark. By six to seven months, it forms the majority of their diet. Gorillas spend considerably less time climbing trees than other great apes, such as orangutans or chimpanzees. Younger gorillas love to play up high. Getting back down is usually the hard part, but not today. All aboard the gorilla train. With their strong grip, infants know the easiest way to get around is by getting a firm hold on their mother's hair. This ride is as reliable as they come. It's been a huge morning for the gorilla babies, and they're starting to burn out. It's time to nestle into the comfiest pillow there is, Mum's tummy. The gorillas aren't the only zoo babies that are beginning to get sleepy. As the midday sun rolls overhead, many animals are getting set to take a snooze. To conserve their energy, tigers sleep over 18 hours a day. This is just one of many nap times for these big cats. A rock-solid headrest may look uncomfortable, but brown bear cubs aren't too choosy. Soft bedding isn't in demand here either. A solid tree stump is just fine for this tacking kid. Kangaroos in the paddock are happy resting in the traditional manner, on a soft bed of grass. For those after something a little different, there are a few dirt beds on offer. After such a busy morning, it's time for all the zoo babies to embrace a midday nap. Time to dive in and get the afternoon going with a splash. It's playtime at the zoo. Growing tiger cubs love to get their paws and claws on whatever toys they can. This palm tree branch is in serious trouble. Tiger mums also make excellent playgrounds for cubs testing their balancing skills. Whoops! These other cubs are always up for some impromptu bear wrestling, but they need to pick their opponents wisely. Taking on Mama Bear is not advised. She's a few weight classes above this brazen little cub. She knows all the moves. It may look rough, but these playtime tussles help the youngsters learn how to handle themselves against other bears in the future. This little leopard battle has a referee closely watching the action, but it doesn't take much for the ref to get involved as well. 
Not all big cats need a playmate. Who knew a witch's hat could make the perfect chew toy? The Jungle Gym has opened its doors to the Bonobo family. This gang could teach Tarzan a trick or two. Bonobos look a lot like chimpanzees, but behaviorally, they have much less in common. While chimps live in a competitive male-dominated culture, bonobos live in a peaceful, matriarchal society. If there's one good reason to have a break from playtime, it's to scratch an itch. Wombat Joey's know just how to hit the right spot. A well-scratched baby wombat is a happy wombat. Let the monkeying around continue. Time to make our way over to the primate department. These expressive, cheeky characters are often highly active, making them one of the most popular types of animal on display. One of the most common types of monkeys are macaques. Besides humans, they are the most widespread primates in the world. Macaques pay special attention to their babies. This little one is getting the once over. If there are any lice living in that hair, they won't be there long. Others in the group are enjoying similar treatment. In macaque families, grooming occurs multiple times a day. Macaques live in strong social groups, some containing up to 200 individuals. These mischievous monkeys are always looking to move their way up the hierarchy. Play fighting, and sometimes real fighting, is how they learn and earn their place in the troop. Whoops! A small pond is the ideal place for these long-tailed macaques to test each other. An ambush could come from any direction. It's crucial to watch your back. These cheeky monkeys will be water wrestling for quite a while. We'll check back on them soon. When it comes to creating comfortable home zones, most zoos design their living spaces to be as close to an animal's natural environment as possible. Grey kangaroos like to browse open grassland and woodland areas, just like this. The joeys are even easier to please, as their mothers supply bedrooms for their babies to lounge around in. Their cosy pouches come complete with four teats that provide milk on demand. For the joeys that have already left the pouch, a comfy patch of grass is all they need to unwind. With so much space available, there's more than enough room for this mob. For those feeling a tad peckish, there's even food delivered by hand. Some kangaroos just want to get away from it all, and for them, rest areas are provided. In here, it's animals only. Ostriches are also right at home on grassy plains. So when setting up camp for them, zoos need to supply these birds with lots of grazing space. The upside of housing ostriches is they don't mind sharing their real estate with other African animals. Although this one doesn't appear to be too happy with these pushy zebras. Being the largest bird in the world doesn't seem to impress these hungry mammals at all. Many zoos create special nocturnal houses for their residents that are usually active at night, like kiwis from New Zealand. By swapping night for day, visitors can still catch these fascinating creatures in action. Keeping the animals mentally and physically stimulated is another high priority for zoos to ensure their residents are happy and healthy. 
Some exhibits allow visitors to come face to face with their favorite animals. It's always nice to share delicious treats with new friends. From a design perspective, bird aviaries present an interesting challenge for zoos. They want an exhibit that can suit a wide range of bird species, but also gives the occupants plenty of room to fly and keeps them safe. From the visitor's perspective, they like to be able to see the animals up close without infringing on the bird's personal space. In this airy exhibit, the feathery residents roam and fly freely, while the humans are confined to the centre pathway. This allows animals that may be a little shy the opportunity to stay hidden, the choice to come out in the open being entirely up to them. Food trays present a simple enrichment that not only feeds the residents and keeps them occupied, but also gives dedicated bird lovers the opportunity to watch their favourites in action. The family album is opening up this afternoon, getting up close and personal with some creatures native to East Africa, sable antelopes. After a nine-month gestation, Newborn calves weigh in at 15 kilograms. Mothers instinctively hide their babies in long grass to keep them safe from harm, visiting them several times a day to nurse them. As they develop, the young antelope's coats change to a rich reddish brown, and their facial markings become more distinct. After several weeks, the calves join small peer groups but continue to suckle from their mothers until they are weaned at six to eight months of age. While the longer horns of the male sable antelopes draw plenty of attention, in the wild, it's the dominant female that leads the herd. Like many herbivores, sable antelopes are acutely aware of their surroundings. Even while browsing on vegetation, they remain highly alert. This heightened awareness is how they keep the herd safe. Captivity doesn't dull their instincts. Only a ninja could sneak up on these antelopes. Next is a South American animal that is most at home in the treetops, spider monkeys. After a seven month pregnancy, females give birth to a single baby. For the first four months of life, spider monkey babies stick to their mums like glue, often wrapping themselves around her belly. Spider monkey tails are prehensile, meaning they can be used to grab things. Babies will use this ability to hold on to their mother's tail with their own. These monkeys live almost exclusively in the rainforest canopy. That's a long way to the ground, so little ones need to hold on tight. By the time they're 10 months old, the youngsters are strong enough to independently explore the trees. Spider monkeys get their name from their long, lanky arms and legs. Those limbs may appear a bit much on ground level, but in the trees, they are the perfect sized tools to forage for vegetation and ripe fruits. Zoos do their best to replicate the wild diet of spider monkeys, but sometimes they are given treats, like some freshly sliced watermelon. You have to eat fast in this family. With arms that long, those fruit pieces will be snatched up in no time. In a zoo down under are some very different youngsters. Little hoppers just six months of age. White-lipped tree frogs. They may not appear all that impressive right now, but one day they will become the largest tree frogs, not just in Australia, but the world. Growing up to 14 centimetres in length, this species can appear as pure green, a pale brown, or a combination of both. 
Their name comes from the bright white stripe running along their lower jaw. As a nocturnal animal, this species is most active on warm, humid nights. During daylight hours, they prefer to find a dark and damp place to rest. White-lipped tree frogs are partial to a variety of insecty treats. Suction cups on their toes help them to reach high places, broadening their hunting grounds when searching for crunchy snacks. Crickets are on the menu for afternoon tea. These frogs can sometimes travel much further than most people realise. They are often found in crates of bananas and other produce, hundreds of kilometres away from their usual habitat. These cheeky, slimy stowaways can live for more than 10 years. One of the most exciting things about zoos is getting to see different types of creatures up close and in person. An experience that would rarely happen in the wild. For zookeepers, a big perk of the job is getting hands-on with some of the animals in their care. Ideally, when zoo babies are born, it's their natural parents that raise them. But sometimes, keepers need to step in and help out. At a zoo in New Zealand, the captive kiwi population has just gone up by one. Kiwis are endangered, so this large chick is a precious bundle indeed. After being weighed, it's carefully put into a warm incubator. This baby's in safe hands and off to a great start. Some animals need to be fed intermittently during the day and night. This means their adopted parents have to stay with them overnight or, in some cases, go to their place for a sleepover. It's not just the keepers that get to have close encounters. Some zoos allow their visitors to have personal experiences with their residents. Although this encounter may be a little too personal. If there's any afternoon tea to be found here, the macaques will find it. Let's take a trek to an Australian zoo to visit a rarely seen creature, a furry-faced sugar glider. This youngster is just six months old. In case the large, round eyes didn't give it away, this Australian marsupial is nocturnal, spending a large part of its evenings foraging for various flowers and nectars to satisfy their sweet tooth. Sugar gliders spend their time almost exclusively in trees. Not only is this where they find food and shelter, they also provide a safe haven from any predators lurking below. Sugar gliders are like mini skydivers, using a stretchy membrane that extends between their wrists and ankles to glide from tree to tree. Hollows make perfect tree houses for these little marsupials, giving them a cosy place to raise their young. While these fluffballs are usually sleepyheads during the day, a patient zoo visitor can get lucky and catch them in action. In captivity, these gliding mammals can live for 12 to 15 years. Zoos not only have classic favourites under their care, but also more rare creatures like these. They may look like an average herd of horses roaming around this open-range zoo paddock, but they're far from it. These are Shavolsky's horses. In the past, these stocky, muscular animals could have been spotted roaming the mountains along the borders of Mongolia and China. But due to interbreeding with domesticated horses, they became extinct in the wild. Thankfully, their story didn't end there. Zoo breeding programs have enabled these special creatures to be reintroduced back into the wilds of Mongolia. 
This next group of animals are rare for an entirely different reason. They are all albino or leucistic, and they certainly stand out. These animals would be a rare find in the wild because their white coloration makes them unable to effectively camouflage themselves. Albinism and leucism produce very similar characteristics, but there are minor differences to spot for those with a keen eye. Animals with albinism have an absence of melanin, a pigment which gives color to skin, feathers, hair, and eyes. Leucism is a partial loss of pigmentation, which gives most animals a more blotchy appearance. The eyes of most leucistic animals still have color, whereas the eyes of albino animals are usually red or pink. Zoos are a great option for these animals because in captivity, they are kept safe from harm. Their snowy appearance make them some of the coolest looking creatures in the zoo. Breeding programs have given zookeepers around the world an insight into the life cycle of many creatures. One being the red panda. A few days before giving birth, expectant mothers build their birthing den. Then, after 135 days, the wait is finally over. Small cameras hidden inside this den give us a secret window into her world at this special time. Despite their small physical size, litters are usually no more than two cubs. These tiny balls of fluff are born with their eyes and ears closed, making them virtually helpless. So their mother keeps them safe inside the den, nursing them for the first seven to 10 days. In a couple more weeks, the cubs can see and hear. By 40 to 50 days, the babies are actively exploring their den grooming and playing as they go. As the cubs grow, their short tail extends until it becomes almost as long as their bodies. More than just an attractive appendage, red panda tails help them to maintain a sense of balance. At three months of age, the cubs finally venture outside. As newborns, the soles of their paws are bare, but as they get closer to adulthood, they sprout fur, giving their feet additional grip while making their way through the branches. When red pandas are about a year and a half old, they are mature. At this stage, their mother will encourage them to move on so she can have another litter of cubs. These zoo favorites can spend more than 14 years cruising and snoozing in the treetops. The afternoon is racing along almost as fast as the macaques. No surprise, the whole family is still monkeying around in the pond. Swimming can actually be beneficial for macaques as some troops spend a considerable amount of time in trees overhanging riverbanks. This baby's keeping dry, but taking in all the splashy action. In the wild, their swimming skills come in handy, helping them escape from any land-dwelling predators. In most cases, it would be rare for a macaque to be caught off guard by a predator. The troop is always on the lookout for potential threats and if danger is spotted, the alarm is spread quickly. This is one of the major benefits for animals living in large groups. Help is never too far away. Whoops! This baby is still coming to grips with its gangly limbs. There are so many things for a baby macaque to learn. Knowing what foods are good is essential. The best way is to learn from the older monkeys. Sharing is caring in this macaque family. But
But it's not just food. Babysitting is another shared responsibility in macaque troops. Other females in the troop will nurse babies, and males will protect them from danger. When it comes to macaque babies, the more help, the better. These curious monkeys just can't resist putting their hands on everything. Another busy day is coming to a close. The visitors have now departed and the animals are beginning to settle down. This white tiger cub still has a bit of energy to burn, but it looks like Mum has different ideas. Safely in its pouch, this Joey knows when to call it a day. The deer fawns have settled for a nice spot close by their mothers. Red pandas are happy to take a kip in the treetops, but a personal log platform is also a comfy option. Down in the boar pen, getting some shut-eye can prove a challenge for those wanting to turn in early. The baby rock hyraxes are ready to snuggle in. Finally, all is quiet, with the zoo babies taking a well-earned rest, so they can have all new adventures tomorrow.